Netflix. Demos, demos. Yes, I have a demo. I have a demo. Gabor has a demo. Maybe? Oh, yeah, yeah, Gabor. I will do it next week because I have to write the documentation and some other small fixes. So sometimes we get bullshit excuses and this one is a super bullshit excuse. How do you need documentation to give a demo? Because I would like to show the documentation too. <laughs> you can show the documentation next week. That will be two demos. Beautiful. Since when do we show the documentation during a demo? Oh my God. So Gabor, Gabor, Gabor. What, what did I do here? To be disappointing. Dean. No, no demo for me. I was looking forward to seeing Gabor's one. Uh, do I have demos? Do I have demos? What did I do? I push something, but you don't care. So I don't have any demo. Okay, so we'll do with Antoine later. Uh, topics, uh, we'll see based on the the status check here. Um, so nothing new on Orchard One. I don't remember any PR, any PR or anything from Thursday. On Orchard Four, as the fortune. Uh, we saw that. We saw that. We didn't see that. Uh, fixed typo, disabled features. Okay, I'm right. Yes, 14, yeah. Fixed tags, shapes, missing in block template. What is that? Block themes, block liquid. Okay, displaying the tags. Yeah, because a, a few weeks ago we, or John 3, changed the naming convention so that we didn't have to use the very complicated display name okay. um, in order to render them, so just fixing that. Uh, remove the audience section from the OpenID server documentation. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Why? Why? So, why is that? Greek people are so loud when they join a meeting. First, Sotiris and Janis. Can't be a by chance. <laughs> well, I'm super loud today also, so I won't say anything. So much background noise. Update the scope creation update UI to mention that the server tenant is always. So apparently, Kevin doesn't watch the the recordings because you will know that this message is too long, it doesn't fit. Can't read. So here. Okay, checked, disable, checked, okay. Checked by default and edit something, I assume. Mention a server tenant is always included in access. Here, in access doc. That's why we don't put the commit messages. Avoid auth by OpenID if the account is disabled. Yeah, we are from um, Isham. We found that security issue. Fix modules referencing other modules. Oh, oh. We had module references, interesting. So this is not one, just reordering. I reordered them all as well afterwards because they were just all over the place. Moving migrations because they are useless. Why do you remove a migration here? 
um, because the migration belongs to another startup. Okay. Uh, three, three. Okay, so you cleaned everything. Good. Yeah, mostly it was those the ones you're looking at there, the Orchard Core dot settings. Oh, where a lot of projects were referencing the settings project, um, which don't need to be anymore. Okay. Checkbox hint on render title. Check to render the title in display. Action for consistency. Uh, just looks weird if you don't have it and all the other ones do. And it says bootstrap regression. Ooh. New bootstrap. So I knew this one would come up. This is complicated but it's old as well it's back in bootstrap 3 col lg meant nothing so we had some css or some special sass in the um admin theme to make it mean something which kind of was a medium sized column or a, or a large column um, but in bootstrap 4 the col dash sm and the col um MD now means something because you have auto sizing columns. Um, so discovered this when I did the um, cards and columns. Um, yeah, it's still not exactly ideal because there's a lot of variation in sizing. Um, I think I remember these ones. Yeah, we made at the beginning. Not you changed the names, but I, it reminds me something. I might be the culprit. Yeah, I, I changed the names to make them more meaningful. Um, there's the issue, uh, one of the issues, the issue there, but you can still see there's a GIF on there where you can see the, the variation in sizing that it causes. Uh, okay. Okay. Bump loadash. Bump loadash. Bump loadash. Add authentication checks to some. Yeah, good, good thing here. Every time we have a driver that does something, we should also check the permissions because the controller will want to do that for us. Fixing names. Okay. Ooh. Where does it Get the group ID from the placement. Where no? No, it's just, it's probably static base. in the file somewhere. It's not just the convention base. everywhere else. I would say the base one, but I think so. I'm not sure about this change. I think the goal of ungroup is to actually change the value of group ID with the string that we pass, and this is in the base class. So you might have broken the search settings with that. I'll, I'll check, I think. Um, see here, and this is what, so like, yeah, maybe this will be always true. <laughs> I am afraid, no, this might not be always true, but yeah, we just want to show it when it's exactly search. So the, I don't think group ID is search in this case automatically. This is the other way around. So, um, yeah, 
mean, uh, group group IDs are a constant in the um, in that file. In that file, okay. Yeah. So then, then you're right. Let me check. Yeah. All the other drivers used a constant in this. Okay. Oh, I see. see. Yeah, yeah. That's the condo. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. I was afraid of that. Every time I say okay, good, there is my phone that thinks I said okay, good. You don't see that, but I can. Okay. Thank you. Fixing Linux setup by making sure the directory created before creating a file. Yes, and and something I commented on the PR, just FYI, if you say if so, yeah, it's specific to Linux apparently. So if you create the file, you need to be sure that the, the why is that? Uh, yeah. When you get the file name and you want to create a file, be sure that the directory exists. So here he was checking that the directory was existing, otherwise creating a directory. Good. But something I found recently is that if the file name doesn't have a directory, this will return null or empty, something I don't remember. And then this will fail. So this is why we need to check also that. Um, um, I have an app that broke just because we created a, a folder. We tried to create a folder. Updating to the new the .NET Core format command part date time. And now I wonder, I wonder if this is something that you found in some other places or is it something that we should also add in other places. I found an example on Stack Overflow. Right. And um, I was looking about mm -hmm. Orchard. Did you find it in other places in Orchard? Or mm -hmm. should we? OK, then maybe we should add it in other places in Orchard. Because if you find an issue with that here, and we have other editors of the date time, then we'll have the same issue. Yeah, but it, it's working for the that time. It's using the this kind of format automatically, but for the created date, uh, it's uh, using the the um, time offset, seconds and and the milliseconds. But why for this one and not for the others? Because um, it's using the input when you're creating. Uh, that field. Okay, so we don't have any other input that shows the date time. There is a, a local that time field. Uh, yes, but my question is that because it's an input and it's displaying a date time, you have to have the format, otherwise it shows a second. So yes. I think we should look into other places in the views where we display date times using inputs because we might also miss that. So you found one example and that's why I was asking, did you look for other occurrences of this input plus date time? And maybe we will have to fix it. So the fix looks good to me. Uh, it's surprising that we have to do that, but at the same time, I understand that might not be the yeah might maybe we should just not use input but use the editor that we use for their date time editors because here we have to parse it in the same format because it's editable so maybe we are using another editor somewhere else and we need to write so yeah we should have the same solution for every Data time editors with mm -hmm. this. That's the only thing I need to say. Um, improve GraphQL query schema validation and logging.
logging errors. Yeah, Kevin's reverted that change in another um, PR um, mm -hmm. because he thought it was causing some problems. Just for the open ID or for everything? No, just for the open ID. Here is the validation error on the schema. Okay. And it's displaying the messages. Nope. Just that it's not JSON. Okay. And that is JSON okay, extension method, I see. Okay, and related to the fact that eventually we'll have this query schema in another tab and not so obnoxious in the main UI. Add some translators to contributors. Media column name, last modification. Um, okay, yeah. Okay. Last modification. I would have expected to see, but I might be wrong, last, last modified. Yeah, I was hesitating between those two. Oh. Interesting. Let's see what says date modified. So it's not class, but it's modified. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe do the same thing as Windows Explorer. I'm sure there are people, there must have been 100 people working on that colon, defining the correct login for this one. So maybe we should trust them. <laughs> See what I mean? Like mm -hmm. so many. I don't know. So, yeah, but otherwise, I mean, it's better than the without the space at least. Um, fixes preserve compilation references. Issue filed by Marlon. Long discussions with Chantiri, and uh, Chantiri fixed it. It will make the build too slow. I, I don't understand how it works, but it's better. You don't want to understand how it works, as long as Jean-Thierry knows. If police services don't fail when creating a scope on a dependent shell that has been disposed, okay, safe, well, safe, check. Uh, we can create a scope with a null service provider, meaning that the shell has been disposed. Me, the shell host removes the shell from its collection as soon as it release, okay. But this may happen when a shell releases its dependent shells and disposes those that are not news so you could have a size provider which is not okay fix c six six and seven duplicate startup okay oh a bug in the shell container factory very interesting There was a um, there's a register startup um, method on the Orchard Core Builder, um, which someone was using to register a startup class in their module, which is um, was then getting picked up by the reflection. Um, so this just fixes it so that if it's already been added, don't add it again. Can add multiple startups for the same key. Um, what is the difference between two files here? Uh, the second one is generated uh, from the first one. Okay, it's for the UI, and this one is just the content. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Mariati. <laughs> um, ooh. Oh, interesting. What method is that result page? Interesting. So it's a task and we're returning, returning null as a task, but it's super, it was supposed to be the task result null, different than the null task. Interesting. And this interesting. Good, good catch. Fix contributor. Fix how scopes are checked in user info controller and we the changes made okay. Okay. Better error by addition, but as claim has scope. Oh, extension method has scope. Or a new method. Okay. Upgrade font awesome. Upgrade lucin.net to meta. Then, and we had already a new update recently, this is a nine. I wonder if they fixed the big issue or improvements. Yeah, performance. What, what, what? Uh, most, mostly performances. They have a release note somewhere. Where is that? On the right. Releases on the right. Okay. Is then performance. Super performance. Okay. Performance. Wow. Features of bugs. Okay. And beta 10, just performance stuff. Oh, this is a mid uh, generic issue. Okay. Oh, someone found an issue with uh, benchmarks. So add detailed event from Lombic. David. Cabo, is that a new employee? Yes, quite a new one. His first name is David? Yes. user deleted event. Okay. Good, good. And new contributor, David is now a new contributor. Good job. Okay. Um, what did I miss? What did I miss? 
don't think it points to right meeting anymore because nobody is using this thing anymore. <laughs> Orchardcore.net slash meeting is pointing to the correct link. I didn't even know we still had that because I thought that there was a redirection from this one to Orchardcore.net. So maybe not, maybe we still have the old redirect of this explicit link. Um, Yeah, and so this, I think the issue here is orchard project.net, the issue is orchard core.net slash meeting the link. This one, maybe we didn't change this explicit link. Okay, so um, back here, demo Antoine, because Antoine has demo. Yes, I do. I have a demo. Uh, Isham asked me to do a demo of one of his modules uh, on his behalf. So he created an Orchard Core Contrib dot modules repository. And the demo is about user impersonation. I added it on a test project. Is it a new get or did you have to clone it and reference it? Yes, I clone it and reference, reference it. It's not published uh, on, on new get. <clears throat> so if you add the reference to this module, you will have a new feature. it and you will have a new menu in security settings impersonation and you can check two checkboxes one to, to specify that administrators can impersonate uh, other users and if you check the second one uh, there will be a new link to end the the current uh, impersonation of user so if you save these options in the users page you will have a new button impersonate at the end of each uh, user so i am logged as the admin i created a new user with an editor role and if I click on impersonate I will be logged as the other user based on his permission the permissions of the um, of uh, his role and you have an end impersonation link but you can create the content as if you were this user if i go back to the content items The test has been created by this user, and I can go back to end impersonation. And I'm back to admin at, as, uh, as uh, the current user. 
interesting. And if you logged off, I wonder how it works. If you log off while you are impersonating, does mm -hmm. it? Would that it look? Okay, so I impersonate as the other user. I log off. I go back to the admin. And I'm back to uh, the, the okay. admin user. So the end impersonation is like, let's re-log as the actual account. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you already logged as the other one. Yes. Cool. And I tried also with another role, for example, contributor. And I was wondering if uh, you see a contributor has less permissions. So it doesn't even have the right to uh, create content because there is no new menu. But it can uh, list the the article and the other uh, content types. But it's you can have the the sub menu. But if if I click on uh, on publish. You will have the four or three uh, error. So we can, yeah, it shows that we could check the permission before, but at mm -hmm. least there is a, there mm -hmm. is a security check at least. Good. Um, and the question now is, what's the point of being a contributor if you can't even contribute? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it means, but um, that, that looks good. There are some security impl implications, like now an admin can say this person did that, um, which is interesting. I wonder if without this module, you could be able to do that still, like with a workflow that would create a content item and set the author. Yeah, I think that would work the same way. Uh, so yeah, that's not much more of a security issue than workflows. Security critical permission. So yes, it should it should have the flag security critical, at least. I didn't see that on the list of features. The security critical flag, which we have. So feedback for Isham on the metadata. Oh no, it's a, it's a, the security critical is not on the feature, it's on the, on the permissions. That's different. So that's why we don't see it here. It's on the permission. And here it's not based on permissions, it's based on uh, a checkbox. So maybe, should it be a permission actually to add to a, to a role instead of having a checkbox here? Mm -hmm. Right now it's only for the administrators. Yeah, but what is an administrator? For mm -hmm. us, an administrator is just a role that yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It, it has, there is no such thing as administrators in Orchard. It happens that the default recipes have a role called administrator, but that's it. So what we have is super user or um, permission. That's it. So that's why I'm saying this checkbox might be, if it's a super user feature, then it should be a permission. And then we will see that it's a security critical permission. Allow administrator to end the impersonation process. And this checkbox allow administrators to end the impersonation process. I don't understand why you will not want to be able to end an impersonation. Yeah, it should be implied, yes. So that's weird to say, no, you can't remove your impersonation. Well, <laughs> I can log off and relog in and then boom. Yes. So don't tell me what I can't do. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, maybe just remove the settings and have a permission feedback for Ishan. Good job. And it uh, would be interesting to have all the um, modules that are hosted in the Orchard Contrips repository to be available at least as MyGet or CloudSmith packages, if not on NuGet. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can just point to a MyGet feed and then reference it directly instead of cloning it. Cheap and uh, might be useful. Thank you for the demo, Antoine. Thank you, Isham, for the feature. Um, next, next Gabor will show us the audit trail.
No, he doesn't want to. So next week. Um, then, then, then questions, comments, topics to talk about. No demos, no new sites. Dead. Okay, that's okay too. Um, taking a look at the repository then, just because nothing else. Here, oh, do we have? Oh, that's the UN. I'm just going to let slash. We've got a lot of time left. I could probably I'd, um, put a little module out over the weekend for CK Editor, which I could um, give a quick demo on. About what? Sorry? CK Editor. It's an alternative oh. or different different editor. The one that we don't want? Yeah, yeah. It's not for you. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, yeah. The issue, so we used to use CK Editor in Orchard 1. Maybe it's still the one that we're using by default. But the licensing is completely not as permissive as it used to be, so we could not use it for Orchard Core. Um, talking about that, two things. I think that we mentioned Slate. Slate, yes, a long time ago. Because we looked at some, so apparently Antoine mentioned Slate, yes, or at least he find the issue. Um, yeah, so we have an issue where people like, oh, this one, yes, this one is super nice actually. So we found Sledge yes, which is extensible, but I think this one is even better. We talked about it during a meeting. Uh, Editor JS, which is also completely extensible. And this is the kind of experience you have when you edit on the, on the back end, so you can type stuff. And these are blocks, so. Yeah, it's like you have a, a body editor where it's actually made of blocks. So you can also extend this, the blocks at this level of the body, which is interesting. And there is a module. So Danity who works for H, uh, ETCH company, H Play, and they make lots of websites for uh, games. Um, they have a repository. Uh, Norg on GitHub. Play or H. Someone will share the link with me. Uh, um, it's it's UK, I think. Yeah. I do so with a dash or that's it. And okay, so custom blocks, gallery, press kit, widgets, themes. SEO content permissions, people might be interested in this one. Um, and and user profiles, we maybe should look at it. We talked about it on Thursday, maybe we should look at it. Uh, search, news, workflows, so, so many modules. The, the blocks one is the um, editor. Blocks is. Okay, good. And then they have this one, which is, they don't say it, but it's supposed to be based on editor JS. So I'd like to have a demo of that. So next week, Antoine will give us a demo of that. Because he's good at cloning repositories and testing. And maybe there is even a new get back. Dude, too easy for you, Antoine, okay, to make a demo of that. Because they didn't make a demo for us. Um, yeah, UK is too far away, Dean. Need to fix it. Used by press kit. Yeah, so yeah, I'd like to see a demo of that that editor inside Orchard, how it looks like. Just talking about that, that's what it made me think about. Why did we talk about that? Because you said you would show CK editor. So what's the point then in about showing CK editor if you can have this one? 
why would City um, eat on? It, it, it's a, it is about options. Um, I, I've tried the the blocks one um, that Peter wrote, and it's it's really nice, um, but different again as well. Um, so um, I needed something that could do some styling stuff for me, um, and was able to do it with CK Editor. I'm sure there are many features that you can't do with. Editor.js, like copy pasting Word document, for instance. I'm sure it will support that. It does have a out of the box plugin for for um, copy pasting Word. Yeah, so for some editors, it'll be much be much better. Yeah, if but it's different again. It's also similar to Block.js um, because the CK Editor five is um, also kind of block based, so you can write JavaScript plugins for it. How do I test it? Uh, I think on the docs page. Demo. I can edit. Wow. Fancy. That's beautiful. Oh, <laughs> I can pick checkboxing. It works. It works. It's an image table. Beautiful tables. Media. Okay. Yep. Extensibility. So. We don't care, whatever pleases you. Cash busting. Okay, so that and um, looking back there, lots of PRs. This one I saw this morning and I was wondering did you rename it dynamic cache? And you did. And I was, so is dynamic cache a good name? Because it's not really dynamic, it's just a feature I call dynamic cache. I was worried that it, you will have to change lots of places with that. But why didn't you change the recipes where we inject? No, the menu, they don't use that. So we, nothing is using that right now in, the, in our templates. Nothing in our templates is, is using this. Um, even in the demo module? Not even in the demo module. They're all using the shape attributes, the cache attributes that are on the shape tag helper. Yes, OK. Um, interesting. OK, so yeah, that, that should be a, a demo for a um, decoupled site, at least. We should have that as a decoupled site example, um, or just a standard cache. But the decouple side makes sense because we can have um, dependencies on content items and so on. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, so then that's fine to have a long name that like this. I'm just worried that dynamic people will ask, why is it, how is it dynamic? <laughs> um, I I wonder if we should call it OC cache. Just say it's core cache, but even that. Yeah, um, Hisham suggested um, possibly OC as well, prefixing. Um, I don't know. I don't. Mind there is no much. good name. There is no good name. Naming is hard. Sure. Maybe, yes. And as I said on Thursday, naming and caching is hard. So cash, naming a cache is also hard. And um, yeah, I'm sure someone will find an ID and then will be like, yes, much better than everything. But so far, nobody has found better name. Okay, so this one, because otherwise there is a conflict. And we'll go right there. Um, could me all. Didn't we just do that? Could me all. Pretty sure I saw that here. Maybe not. Um, random things, logo. Fixes an issue. The question is, is that an issue? Discussions about 
Yeah, it's really an issue. Um, creating empty templates or the tray module. Oh yeah, we could talk about that. Yes, very interesting discussion. So this PR that we won't see today because Gabor wants to write documentation. Um, and so huge 116 files and not just like small files. There are small files, but there are huge changes. So it's huge uh, feature. I want to see a demo or two. Um, and, 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 and there are some little things I commented from what I saw, uh, nothing special, these kind of, of things like double encoding. Um, you need to check that. I think this will be an issue here. Uh, we talked about localization and I assume that now you made it work. So that's good. So this is how it should be. Um, this one was is the most concerning, but I'm not concerned anymore, I think. So in the code that uh, you are submitting, Gabor, there is a license. There is a light. Oh, stupid item. I just want to use the file. How can I see the file? Should change. I, I, I don't understand. There is, ah. So there is a file here. It's not that either. Well, okay, so there is this file. Now we can see, okay? In the module license.md. So the first comment I made, my concern was any contribution is going through the CLA, okay? And I read the CLA that we signed. And the point here, you may submit them separately to the project. Okay, so you wish to submit materials that are not your original work. You may submit them separately to the project if you A, retain all copyright and license information that was in the materials as, as you receive them. Okay, this is the case. In the description accompanying your submission, include the phrase, submission com containing materials of a third party followed by the names of the, so in theory, in the PR we should say that, but I mean, it's obvious you have a license, but we should say that in the PR, followed by the names of the third party and any licenses or other restrictions of which you are aware and follow any other restriction, the projects written guidelines concerning submission. Yes, so I think that's okay to use that kind of code, even even more that we do that all the time, even by referencing other open source projects. Uh, maybe something we should do, and this is something I did on the repository for Microsoft, and I had to go through all the legal uh, thing, is that um, I think we have it in option one, maybe in option core also, to have a, um, a file. So instead of having it in this folder, and you will have to check if it's fine for one. We have, we have, we have, we have contributing contributors. Do we have um, a file? Normally that... we've been just referencing them from each kind of module docs. So, so yeah. in the docs folders, there's a, a kind of credits. Yes, but no, yes, credits. So, so I went through all the legal stuff for this repository and what we have here is okay. Yes, here. So it's a notice file, but it's a file that references all the open source projects we have, their version and their license, the text of their license. So this, I think it's, it's better well, at least it follows some legal advice that Microsoft is following, okay? So that's a good thing for, for one. Then it's centralized, so you don't have to look for that in specific folders, okay? So it's explicitly listed here. So I think it's better than having it in 
the folder, but maybe we should have both. I'm fine with keeping it in the specific folder, body tray folder, and also reference it here. At least if you prefer it to be in the folder, it will be there. But if legally we should have it centralized, we will have it also centralized. And if people are looking for all the references on of open source project, they will find it easy. Okay, so that I think that would be good to have it um, as a common placeholder. And we already do that actually for uh, the themes. So we have the license files in each folder for the themes that we are uh, sharing. So I don't think it's uh, it's an issue. I was worried at first I wanted to look at that because I didn't remember that for a module, but we do that for the themes. And maybe we should have also a file referencing every open source project. Okay. Um, and Gabor, you have nothing to, to do here. If you want to start the, you don't, um, what, what you did is right, but I think if we create the file, it's independent from this PR. We should create a file that references all the license of the open source projects we use. Um, like this. And in, I'm, so from the recommendations I followed for Microsoft, even the package references for open source projects were, you see, CSV helper, this version, and copy paste the license here. By using fluid, crazy. So yeah, um, so good. Yes, that's a huge piece of code. You care to see a demo. But already some comments on um, things to change. You've seen that. So PRs. And I think that, so this PR, the audit tray, I didn't see anything breaking, so it's just a separate module. So I assume there is no reason to wait for a 1.0. It can be merged before, right? Yes, it's a separate module. Yeah, so that's good. Um, Refactor media shapes. Oh, this one. So it could be simpler. We talked about it last, when did we talk about it? Last week? Yes, during the meeting, not during the trial, right? Yeah, when we, when we merged the other fixes for the JavaScript stuff. And I made you work, and you worked, and you you found a better way to fix the issue. Yeah, and found out probably why the other um, templates are using shape providers. Media field edit localized. What is that? It's just localization strings that get shared between two of the editors. Why do you need to check if it's a special one? Um, because they register IDs. They were just a bar ID, so you don't want to have two of them on the DOM. You know, it's a minor issue. It's but this was the this was what he was trying to fix. I'm sure you did the. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary to, to yeah, just to add a flag in the context item, just to render or not. Some you can just render them all the time and use them if they are there, or don't use them if you don't need them. Um, I'm super, you know, I, it's just because I've used that by the past and I'm super not proud of using things like this. Like, I'm sure we're still using it like the, for the preview stuff, or, but I don't, I, I don't like when you do that. So yeah, we do use it all over the place. Um, <laughs> <It's ugly. laughs> yeah, maybe we need a, need a better way because it is used all over the place to only inject something once. Maybe we need a better way to. Um, say say that a shape can only be rendered once. Like we have those like contextual 
object that is not linked to the views, here it's linked to the context, maybe it should be part of a DI service, something like that, right? Um, yeah. Okay, good, 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 good. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it should be merged. I didn't merge it, and Antoine didn't either, so or at worst case, Thursday, we merge it. Um, Okay, well, questions, comments, did I miss something in the chat? Thank you. Oh, Tiny MC. Thank you, I didn't remember that. Or maybe we already had the issue with CK Editor, or it was an old version of the um, All good. So thanks everyone for joining. See you on Thursday for triage or next Tuesday for a huge demo about audit trace. Bye-bye, thanks.